alaikum everyone. This is Mahina Zalbaz, Vice President, Egypt Schoolers Economic Society. Today we're having the second lecture of Introduction to Econometrics Part 1, presented by Dr. Anita Staniva, who's working as a research fellow at Oakland University of Technology in New Zealand. Dr. Anita, could you start, please? Uh, hello, everyone. Um, yeah. uh, thank you for attending my lecture today. Um, Today, we're going to start uh, talking about um, simple linear regression models, and I'm going to introduce you to this uh, topic. Um, so, um, we, uh, the outline of the lecture today uh, is a um, brief motivation about the topic. Um, we're going to see um, what the simple linear regression is. Uh, we're going to talk about the classical linear regression model assumptions. Um, and how we measure the goodness of fit by introducing the R square uh, indicator. And I'm going to show you some simple linear regression uh, applications in state and how we test some of the assumptions of the classical linear regression model. Um, so if you think uh, in a way that uh, let's assume we have uh, two uh, variables that represent some population and we call this Y and X. And we're trying to explain why, in terms of x, is, uh, so in x, uh, in this case, uh, is a an explanatory variable that explains why. So we try to study how y changes, how y varies with the change in x. And the simple examples could be uh, the ones given in the table. So let's assume we want to determine the demand of beef. And of course, the demand of beef uh, can be explained the pr uh, of the price of beef. Or the uh, maize yield can be explained by fertilizer application. So this is a very simple indication of what we're going to look at today. And uh, if you remember from the last time, we talked about the correlation coefficient, which, uh, of course, uh, I mentioned that indicates how the two variables are associated with uh, uh, one another. However, um, the R, um, which we measured the correlation with this notation R, if you remember. However, it does not give an idea uh, of the kind of the relationship that is involved between these two variables. Uh, therefore, in econometrics, we use something called um, regressions, which is a simple, which is a, the most common tool in applied econometrics, and which is something that I want to talk to, uh, to you today. Um, and this regression uh, analysis helps us to understand the relationship between uh, variables, and it is particularly useful um, where we have uh, when there are more than uh, two variables, when there are many variables, let's say we look at the unemployment, uh, interest rates, the money supply, exchange rates, inflation. So, and in this case, when the interaction between these variables is more complex, then we need the regression analysis. Um, or consider the example that I gave you last time as well, the problem in trying to explain the price of houses. Um, so the price of houses will depend on many characteristics, such as number of uh, bedrooms, location of the houses, lot size, and so on. So all this sort of um, uh, relationship, um, we need uh, to use the uh, regression analysis. So we call simple regression when the relationship between, uh, when we have examined the relationship between two variables, such as uh, y and x, when we have only one regressor, only one x, and we call multiple regression when there are two or more regressors. It could be x1, x2, x, uh, n. So today we're going to focus mainly on the um, simple uh, linear regression model. And from the next lecture, from the next class, we're going to uh, start introducing more access into the uh, analysis. Uh, uh, as a way to understand the regression um, analysis, 
uh, let us begin with just uh, two variables. So assume we have this linear uh, relationship between y and x, um, which shows how does y change with the change in x. Uh, so we can introduce this mathematically in that y, where y equals to alpha plus beta x. In this case, we can um, the notations are as follow. So y is our dependent variable, x is called independent or exponentiary variable, alpha is intercept of the straight line, or this is the intercept of the regression model, and beta is the slope of the line of the line. So uh, this is uh, what we're going to see from now on. This is how we're going to uh, express um, uh, mathematically the linear regression model. And um, in the, the textbooks, you're uh, going to see different uh, notations uh, in respect to the dependent and explanatory variable. So you can see that dependent variable is called explain variable, predictant, or regressant uh, response variable. Sometimes it's called endogenous variable, or this is the outcome. This is the main outcome of interest. This is my Y in here. And the explanatory variable is called independent variable, uh, predictor, regressor, uh, it could be exogenous and covariate variable or control variable. So all these uh, notations are uh, related to the X, to the explanatory variables in the regression analysis. Uh, so in the single regression module, um, let's just uh, repeat again, we have one variable which is called the dependent variable, and this variable is expressed as a linear function of one or more exponential variable. So if we have one exponential variable, we call it simple regression model. If there are more than um, one, two or more, we call it multiple regression. So what is happening here, changes in the independent variable going to lead to the change in the dependent variable. Of course, this is not always going to be the case, and uh, sometimes we might observe uh, something that's, that's called uh, causality or feedback effect in econometrics, uh, which um, we can see that uh, in more um, advanced cases, uh, the relationship can go in um, either ways, but in this case at the moment, we're going to assume that the flow is in one direction only. The flow goes from the X to Y. Uh, the linear uh, regression module uh, will always be um, the uh, only one approximation of the true relationship. We need to understand that by applying the regression models, we try to predict, we try to get as much as possible uh, close to the true uh, relationship that we uh, observe. And uh, regression analysis in general is concerned with estimating uh, and predicting the population of the mean value of the dependent variable on the basis of the known or fixed values of the exponential variable. Um, in the next table that I'm going to show you, uh, we have um, 60 um, families, and this is their weekly income and weekly consumption expenditure. Uh, these uh, 60 families are divided into 10 income groups. And uh, we can see that there is a considerable variation in their weekly consumption expenditure in each of these income groups. Uh, but on average, what we can see is that this weekly consumption expenditure increased with uh, increase in the income. So we can um, we can express this. We can look at this relationship uh, mathematically and express this. Uh, equation by introducing the uh, marginal propensity to consume. Um, by some reason, the equation is missing from the slides. So, but what uh, show this relationship on the graph uh, is in that way, we can see that the dark circle points show the conditional mean values of this y against the various uh, changes in the x um, values. 
And if we try to join all these conditional mean values, we can obtain what is called the population regression line and more generally the population regression curve that looks like this. So more simply to, to try to introduce you into the regression analysis, this is what we call the regression of Y and X. This is how um, the, our regression uh, looks like uh, on the graph. Um, but let me give you some more examples here. So as we know from now, this is how we're going to introduce, this is how we're going to write the simple regression model. So let's uh, think in a way that uh, our dependent variable is the output if we good, and this is explained by X, which is in this case labor input. So but we estimate this model, uh, and um, we estimate the um, intercept in the swap, and uh, we find the best fit line for the data. I'm going to show in the next coming slides what exactly I mean by the finding the best fit line for this data. And um, we uh, found that, for example, um, uh, y is equal to 2 plus 0.5x. So this coefficient here stands for the intercept and for the swap. So alpha is equal to 2 and beta is equal to 0 0.5. So you, uh, to answer the question, what does the intercept coefficient mean? In this case, alpha equal to 2 is going to tell us that if the labor R input is equal to 0, then the output is going to be at, at 2 units. In most cases, uh, even later, uh, what I'm going to highlight that in intercept doesn't uh, need to be interpreted, the more uh, the focus uh, is on the beta, on the slope coefficient. And what does the slope coefficient beta here mean? Uh, beta equal to 0 0.5 tells us that if the labor input uh, increased by one in unit, the output of my uh, dependent variable will increase by 0 0.5 unit on average. So uh, even if the straight line relationship were, were true, we would never get uh, all the points uh, on an XY plot that lies precisely uh, due to the something that we call the measurement error. So the relationship uh, is probably um, more complicated, uh, and uh, the best fit straight line is just one uh, approximation. Why? Because there's uh, some unobservable factors that we can't measure and factors that affect the um, uh, analysis and um, some important variables which affect our outcome are missing and may be omitted from the regression analysis. Uh, that's why um, we introduce into the model uh, this E at the end, which is called the L term or the disturbance term. And um, what we know now is X and Y, and what we don't know in this case is the alpha, beta, and E the, in the error term. So regression analysis use some data uh, on X and on Y to make a guess, to make the prediction for this alpha and beta, and to see what they, uh, their coefficients are. Um, so that's, uh, there's no one example of a very simple regression model. Let's assume we want to uh, see um, the effect of the cooking time on test. In this case, taste is Y, taste is the dependent variable, and taste depends on the cooking time. So taste is explained by the cooking time and is a function of the cooking time. So um, in this uh, equation, we, we see that um, um, cooking time is one um, X in this model. So a model, um, another model that uh, is exam another example of a regression analysis is a model that relates the personal wage to some observed education and other unobserved factors. Uh, so in that case, uh, we see we have the wage which is um, in dollars per hour, and this is explained by the years of education. So beta one measure the change in the hourly wages 
given one uh, year of education where we hold all other factors fixed. And this is very important, in particular, whilst we try to introduce uh, more access into the regression analysis. So in this case, this uh, view at the end captures the unobserved factors such as uh, innate ability or unmeasured unobserved from the model factors. Um, Um, in the um, and uh, in your in textbooks, it is standard practice to refer to these uh, estimates of alpha and beta as alpha hat and beta hat. So from now on, if you see alpha hat and beta hat, this means and this relates to the estimate to the predicted alpha and beta. Um, for example, if we have a coefficient of alpha. 34.3 uh, and beta 6.5, these are the estimates of the true unknown parameters. These are the estimates that we we'll receive after regression analysis. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, as I say, it's important uh, for those of you um, that continue with econometrics, it is important to um, make the distinction between the error terms or uh, residuals that I try to uh, introduce into the regression model. Uh, the error term, which we denote with E, is defined as the difference between the particular data point in the, uh, in the two regression line. Um, if I move the slides a bit here, so if this is the best fitting line through my regression model, all this uh, deviation, all this um, uh, distance from the uh, particular data point in the true regression line, uh, we call it as a errors. So now the, the, the slight distinction between these errors and residuals come from here, because once we introduce the, uh, once we run the model and we uh, get the alpha hat and beta hat, which are our estimates, this deviation from the estimated regression line uh, or the distance between the particular data point and the estimated regression line we call residuals. Uh, so the uh, distinction here is that once we say there is deviation between some particular data point and the true regression line, um, and, and this is uh, given in the first line here, However, if we replace this alpha and beta with the estimates, we get a straight line, which is generally a little bit more different than the one that is the, from the true regression line. So this, the estimates, uh, the estimated regression model is gonna be close to that, but not exactly to, uh, to the true uh, regression model. Um, if you find this distinction between the errors and the residuals uh, confusing, you can probably uh, ignore this uh, for now uh, and assume that errors and residuals are the same thing. Uh, however, if you plan on uh, further studies on econometrics, this distinction between uh, errors and residuals is uh, really crucial. So, um, how do we estimate this alpha and beta? Uh, consider the following. If we want to find the best fitting line through the XY plot that we talked about last uh, uh, lecture, um, which uh, contains the some observations, um, with more than two uh, data points, it is not always possible to find the line that fits perfectly to all these points. We try to relate the deforestation and the population size. And if you remember, there's some plots, X, Y plots that we examine this uh, relationship. So, but having more than two points, it's not, it's not, you can see from here, it's not uh, easy to fit uh, the best fitting line, to fit the line that goes through perfectly through all of these uh, points. Therefore, choosing the best fitting line, which makes the residuals as small as possible, or the one, the, the one uh, fitting line that minimizes the sum of the square residuals, 
uh, we're gonna uh, call the uh, regression uh, linear regression uh, or ordinary least square estimator. So the alpha and beta that we get um, in this way that are obtained by minimizing the sum of square residuals are called uh, the ordinary square estimators, or um, we note it as OLS. Uh, so clearly, uh, there is no a straight line that passes through all these points, as I said, and we want to find the best fitting line which minimizes the sum of square residuals. The best fitting line that, um, in this case, is going to look something like this. Uh, in this uh, in this um, uh, graph, basically, these are not my error terms. Uh, there is a wrong notation here. It should be U for the residuals because it uh, relates to the alpha hat and beta hat. Uh, so it relates to the fitted value to the predicted value of my um, intercept and the slope. So what is the criteria here in this ordinary square estimator, uh, which is the most common method in the regression estimates and the one that you're going to use mostly from now on? The criteria is to minimize the sum of the square residuals over the sample uh, data. So we try to minimize uh, this error terms that we uh, I discuss over here. Uh, and how we do this, we do um, by trying to fit the best uh, fitting line, the 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 one that the the one that minimizes the distance from the uh, this data points and uh, uh, this uh, straight line. So um, we why this uh, estimated the error term is square is in a square, uh, just to give the positive and uh, um, negative values equal treatment. Uh, and in particular to give more weight to the large uh, residuals. Um, um, the, the usual way of measuring the size of the residuals is by, uh, as I say, by means of the sum of square uh, residuals. Um, this uh, process is um, a brief mathematically and most of the software nowadays, such as even the simple Excel and state and that I'm going to talk to uh, you about, can uh, find the values of alpha and beta that minimizes this uh, error terms automatically for you. So uh, you don't need uh, to worry too much in terms of mathematically deriving this. Um, what is important, uh, and this is um, relates to more practice, is once the regression has been run into some of these uh, softwares, it is important to check for some sort of outliers by examining the residual terms. Uh, and um, this uh, could be done um, by initial view of the scattered plots if there is only um, one independent variable. But this is something that we're going to look at in a later stage. Uh, what is important for now on is just to uh, get an intuition about the ordinary least square and uh, how we uh, try to estimate this alpha and beta by minimizing the sum of square residuals over the sample data. Uh, and uh, there are some uh, uh, assumptions that um, uh, all econometrics books start with, and they call it classical linear regression model assumptions. And one uh, of these assumptions is the linearity and in the parameters. What this means, this means that the regression coefficients do not enter the function being estimated as exponents, which means uh, beta, and here in this slide I try to uh, distinguish between the linear regression and non-linear regression model. So. Uh, with the linear regression model, this means we have linearity in the parameters. So my betas here are raised to the first power. Well, I can have a square term on my x as my exponential variable, but my betas are raised to the first power, uh, which um, distinguish with the nonlinear regression model in a way that um, my beta are squared to the power of 2, or they could be to a power of 3. This is more um, um, complex way, uh, and we're not going to uh, look at nonlinear regression models at the moment, but 
um, the one of the first classical linear regression assumptions is linearity in the parameters. Uh, the, the second uh, assumption is the uh, sample variation in the explanatory variables. Um, these outcomes of axes, let's assume they are from um, 1 to n, are not all with the same value. Once we introduce into the regression, we're not going to uh, control for h or some other variables of interest twice. So we need to have some sort of variation in our axis in order to determine the outcome of interest. Um, the third classical linear regression uh, model assumption is the random sampling. All this x value must be randomly selected. Uh, 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 then uh, under the fourth uh, classical linear regression assumptions uh, states that we need to have a zero conditional mean or the mean of these error terms that I introduced you today given the specific value of the independent variable x should be zero or uh, mathematical ex the expectation of this error terms condition uh, this is how we read this condition on axis in our model should be zero Mm, under all these four assumptions, we call that our linear regression model, originally the square estimator, is unbiased. Or what is unbiased, this means that our projected model, the expectation of alpha hat, or the uh, estimated the fitted alpha, should be equal to alpha, to the true um, um, alpha. And in a similar way, expected value of beta should be equal to the beta. This is uh, going to be the case of unbiasedness of ordinary square estimator once all these four classical linear regression assumptions are met. Uh, then we have another um, uh, uh, assumption that we call uh, no heteroscedasticity. Um, in the coming slides, I'm going to give you some more example of what I mean by heteroscedasticity. The variance of the error terms are constant across observations. If this variance, if the error terms are constant across the observations, we don't, if we don't observe huge variation in these error terms, we have the homoscedasticity case, and this is what we try, uh, aim to. So the classical linear regression assumption try to say that there is no huge variation, there is no heteroscedasticity in these error terms. Um, number six of the classical linear regression model assumption is no autocorrelation between these undisturbance terms. The residuals are independently distributed and these error terms are uncorrelated. So the covariance between these uh, error terms um, ui and uj condition on this axis i and xj should e be equal to um, to zero, they should be uh, then uncorrelated. Um, number seven, the number of observations that we introduce the, into the model must be greater than the number of parameters to be estimated, and we uh, the notation is n greater than k. Um, and number eight, of course, we try to specify the model correctly. The model should have the right variables. Of course, we're trying to get no omitted variable bias, correct functional form, no specification error, uh, which uh, in practice is almost impossible because most of the regression uh, analysis uh, suffer from something called omitted variable bias. And uh, number nine, there's no perfect multicollinearity. What is the mood, what we understand in econometrics and the multicollinearity is that explanatory variables are independent. So there is no covariance between this. The covariance between xy and xj is equal to zero. By adding more axes into our regression analysis, we're trying to avoid this uh, correlation between uh, each of these axes. So there is no perfect uh, multicollinearity. Uh, let me give you some more insight what uh, exactly um, we understand uh, under this terminology homoscedasticity and heteroscedasticity.
the elders in the Homo Scilistice case, uh, the elders terms has a constant variance given any value of the explanatory variable. Or in other case, the, the variance between u i my error term condition on x should be constant. And this is what the classical linear regression uh, module assumption was, and this is opposed to the heteroskedasticity. The variance of these error terms would depend on the value of x. The variance of this uh, is changing. So this is the case of the homoskedasticity. This is how we can uh, show the uh, graphically the homoskedasticity case. The error terms has constant variance. And you can see the distance between this, each of these error terms that is uh, expressing this normal uh, bell curve uh, is uh, the distance is constant. Uh, this is opposed, as I say, to the header of KCC, where the spread of these error terms will depend on X. So, for example, this graph relates to something uh, in the uh, estimating the return to education. Uh, so, for example, if we think in a way that people with more education uh, have a wider variety of job opportunities, so we would expect more wage variability at the high level of education, which uh, is going to be uh, at uh, uh, at the right end, express at the right end of this uh, graph, <coughs> and uh, in contrast, people with low level of education would have a fewer uh, job opportunities, and uh, they would work for the minimum wage, and this would reduce the wage variability at these low uh, education levels. So this is one example what we understand by the spread of the error terms would depend on X. So uh, this is what we call heteroskedasticity, and I'll try I'll show you in state how we test for heteroskedasticity and what are the options to uh, minimize this uh, uh, to a cure. Uh, no perfect uh, multicollinearity, just uh, a few more uh, lines over here. Uh, we call it two variables perfect collinear if one can be determined perfectly from the other variable. So if you know the value of the x of your explanation variable, you can always find uh, the value of z. Uh, for example, uh, if we regress an income on ages and include both age and month in age and years, so, which is, of course, the same variable age, we're going to have something called perfect uh, multicollinearity because we are trying to uh, control basically double for, <coughs> for ages in that model. Uh, another assumption that uh, is uh, uh, part of this classical linear regression model for some, uh, assumptions is that each of these error terms is distributed uh, normally. Each of these uh, error terms that we observe here have uh, this normal distribution. Uh, it's, uh, once you start working with the <coughs> regressions um, with modeling, uh, it's important to decide on the dependent variables. It's important to uh, decide uh, what sort of uh, variables you're going to control and include into your model. Ideally, uh, all excess or exponential variables should be the one which uh, influence that the ones which causes the dependent variable to, to change uh, in the dependent variable. And the ideal case uh, is the one that uh, X is going to cause Y. Uh, uh, if you uh, can uh, build models where causality assumptions uh, make sense is really uh, very important. Uh, I'll give you some more examples. Uh, for example, uh, if we have uh, one, in, if we look at the population density and deforestation, we can uh, think in a way that increase in X, increase in the population density, is going to cause uh, increase uh, in the deforestation. Uh, so this relationship is going to that way. It's not going the other way around. It's not going the way that deforestation is going to 
uh, cause change in the population density or increase in X if we're thinking about the, uh, the selling of the properties and the houses. If my X is the lot size of a house, the size of the house is going to cause Y is going to cause the value of the house to increase. The more rooms my house has, the higher is going to be the prices. Uh, or if we have uh, some uh, other examples such as advertising, so uh, increase in advertising expenditure is going to cause the company sales to increase and uh, not the vice versa. So uh, this, uh, <coughs> in, in practice, uh, uh, we need to uh, take care uh, in terms of uh, this uh, um, causality that might reflect uh, some uh, of our relationship, and this is going to be more advanced topic. <coughs> so I'm going to avoid talking much about causality today. Uh, but what is important for you uh, is to understand that uh, in some cases uh, your assumption that X is going to cause Y might be wrong. What I mean in this case, someone might think that the causation might go the, the other way around. Or in, the, in some cases, there might be cases that you may not know whether X is going to cause Y. In some other cases, X may cause uh, Y, but Y may also cause X. So uh, there might be more complex uh, relation between these two variables that we need to take into account. Um, formally, the question um, uh, regression analysis that addresses how much of the variability in Y can be explained by X. So we're going to stick to the simple question uh, at the moment. Uh, now uh, we will learn we how to calculate uh, and interpret a regression coefficients by fitting the best uh, fitting line in the sense that it minimizes the sum of square residuals. However, it is um, possible that this best fit line is not the very good uh, fit at all. Uh, therefore, we use some uh, sorts of measure of fit or measure of how good the best fitting line is. And this is what we call the R square. The R square relates closely to the correlation between this uh, Y and X that we talked about last uh, uh, lecture. In fact, for the simple uh, regression model, it is actually the correlation uh, coefficient square. And it provides the formal statistical link between the regression and the correlation. So the R squared, put it simply, measure how well the simple regression model fits the data. Um, and R square is the square of the correlation, correlation coefficient between the actual and the predicted value of Y. It um, can uh, uh, be said in a way that total variability in my outcome is equal to the variability explained by X plus some variability that cannot be explained and uh, is left as an error into the model. Uh, so um, I uh, recall that the virus is, uh, let me just introduce some, uh, some more notations here, some more um, measurements uh, here. Uh, recall that the virus is the measure of the dispersion of our variability of the data. Uh, you remember I introduced the virus standard deviation last uh, week. So here we define closely related concept, uh, which is called the total sum of square. So the total variability in Y can be split in these two bits uh, here, TSS, which stands for the total uh, sum of square, or it's defined the total variability um, of uh, Y of the dependent variable. So think, uh, you can think in this, uh, TSS as a measure of the variability in my outcome, as a measure of variability of this uh, dependent uh, variable as condition on my axis. Uh, the regression model seeks to explain the variability of Y through the explanatory variables X. 
then we can split, we can break down this total sum of square into two terms called uh, regression sum of square and sum uh, of square residuals. So uh, regression sum of square is defined as the uh, square of the difference between y hat, which is my predicted um, outcome, minus y bar. If you remember, we denote the y bar the mean outcome. So this is a measure of uh, the explanation provided by the regression model. Uh, we call this a uh, regression sum of square. And we have another measure that is called the sum of square residuals. Uh, and this uh, 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 is, uh, as I uh, already talked about this, the square root of the residual terms. And what we should remember is that the good fitting model will make this uh, SSR, this term, uh, very small. The smaller is the error term of my model, the better is the, the better model predicts the outcome of interest. Uh, we can combine all these uh, equations above to yield the measure of fit, which we call the R square, and it's defined by this. Um, um, this uh, um, uh, equation. So uh, the R square measures the proportion of the total variance of Y that can be explained by X, to put it simply. This is uh, what you should understand. This is the R square is uh, something that uh, measures the fit of our model, measure how well the sample regression model uh, fits the data. Um, and uh, we should note that all this, uh, uh, all this um, um, total sum of square, uh, regression sum of square, and sum of square residuals, uh, because our sums of square numbers, uh, they are all non-negative uh, values. Uh, some of the properties of this R square uh, that I want to briefly mention is that R square is um, mm, we're going to use this notation from now on, and R square uh, lies between zero and one. So we don't have the highest R square, the better our model fits. So R square is uh, between zero and one. Once we have uh, R square equal to one, this is going to indicate a perfect fit model, and which means that all the data points are going to lie exactly on the regression line. R square equal to zero is going to indicate that X does not have any explanatory power for Y, and X has no uh, influence on Y. So basically, we have no uh, significant relationship between these two variables that we try to look at. And the bigger is the value of R square, this is going to imply that X has more explanatory power in terms of determining my outcome of uh, interest. Uh, so these are uh, the properties of the R square that measures the fit of our uh, regression model. So for now on, uh, what is the crucial for you is just to uh, remember that R square lies between zero and one, and the um, the bigger is the value of the R square, or the more close to one. Uh, this is going to imply that my exponential variable has more power in terms of determining the outcome of interest. Uh, some of the basic state commands that you're going to need in order to estimate your model with data are uh, given in this uh, in this slide here. So we have, uh, if you want to run a simple linear regression between my outcome of interest y and x, we use the command regress in data, or it could be just simple rec without typing the whole name. And if we want to compute the fitted values after this regression analysis, we use the command predict, which gonna give you and you can you need to specify the variable name and comma xb. Uh, and if you want to compute the residuals, you use a similar command predict uh, again with uh, after the comma you specify residual or resid option. Uh, 
uh, in this uh, slide here, I simply uh, try to uh, in, uh, to run a simple uh, linear regression module between uh, log of earnings and education, which is uh, called something we examine something like a return to education. I would assume first a positive uh, relationship between these two variables. The more years of education you have, the higher is going to be your future earnings. And this is what uh, I type in state regress log wage. I observe the earnings for uh, sample of individuals. Number of observation you can see here is 428. And uh, that's uh, my beta, and this is my alpha. So my constant or my intercept here is minus 0 0.18, and my beta is 0 0.10. So, uh, how do we interpret this? First, we're going to look at uh, the coefficient on my beta, and we can say that one additional year of education is estimated to raise the log earning by 0 0.10, or in terms of the relative change in the wages, by a factor of uh, exponential of this, which is equal to 1.1, uh, or put it simply, uh, we can uh, economists often say that an increase in the percent wage uh, about 10% uh, on average. Uh, so one uh, extra year on education uh, will bring you on average about 10% increase on education. Uh, and. Uh, some of the testing assumptions that I talk about uh, today, some of these classical linear uh, regression assumptions that we uh, uh, look at, uh, can be tested in state, can be tested in the practice. So, as you remember, uh, if you remember, um, the module, the original least square module, requires us uh, these uh, assumptions to be worked. Uh, and these are pr uh, primarily concerned about the residuals of the module. The residuals uh, are the same as the error terms, or as we introduced, the, the vertical distance of each data point from the regression uh, line. So you can test uh, all these uh, classical linear regression assumptions that we talk about. We can test the uh, homoscedasticity. Uh, we can test the independence of the error terms or the normality of these error terms. So let me recall that for the homo um, what we're trying to test is that the probability distribution of these error terms has constant variance. You can test in practice uh, by having a state uh, software. Uh, we can test that the error values are statistically independent of each other or we can test the normality of the error term, or these error terms have normally distributed uh, distribution for a given uh, value of x. And uh, the easiest way to test all these uh, assumptions is just to graph the residuals on x and to see the pattern that uh, they, uh, they emerge. As I said, once you uh, use this, uh, once we use the command regress, or once I run this model, I can use the option predict with the common residuals, and this is going to generate me the residual terms of the model. So we can plot the residual terms uh, and see uh, uh, and uh, see different. Uh, cases of the uh, the residuals. So the first uh, graph related to A is what you really want to see uh, and to conclude that uh, your residual terms uh, are perfectly fit uh, pattern. Mm, in the uh, in B uh, is what we uh, called that residuals have no homoscedastic error terms, uh, not homoscedasticity, and in C is the case that meant to the non-independence of the error terms. So in figure A uh, is what a good plot of the residual should look like. Uh, and the points are scattered along the x uh, fairly uh, uh, evenly with a high concentration and the uh, axis. In B, as I said, these residuals are not homoscedastic, they're heteroscedastic. 
and the variance of these residuals increase with the increase uh, in X and with the increase in the exponential variables. And in figure C, um, residuals are not independent. Uh, they are following a nonlinear trained uh, line along X. Now, not correctly uh, specify model uh, if we have this sort of residuals. Um, we can say that our model is not correctly specified. Um, and this plot might come from the model that tries to fit the linear regression module to data that follow a quadratic uh, trend uh, line. Mm. So this is uh, the residuals that come after uh, predicting our model, and we can see this uh, strong positive relationship between earning uh, uh, and uh, education, but the residuals show a fairly uh, uh, homoscedastic distribution. Uh, and if you want to uh, test this, uh, there are some uh, test uh, options in data that basically um, uh, if you still uh, cannot say about, uh, from the graph or well, what's the pattern of your residuals, you can use uh, something we call in uh, STAT uh, HET test uh, after running your regression analysis. And this test is going to give you the uh, X square statistic and the P uh, value. Uh, and this is the test procedure after running my model in this example and simple example on return to education. So uh, once we have um, a large uh, uh, S square, uh, would indicate that we have a heteroscedasticity. Uh, and in our case, we have a, a small. Uh, small statistic and a high probability, which indicates that heteroscedasticity is not a problem to this model, which indicates uh, this model, this error terms are homoscedastic. Uh, so let me just uh, summarize again uh, the lecture today. And uh, if you have some, uh, uh, some more questions related to all the, the, the topic that we cover, please feel free to email me. Um, because uh, uh, I can always uh, uh, respond to that question. Uh, so today, uh, to put it simply, we introduce the, the simple linear regression model. Uh, we talk about uh, how to derive and what our uh, coefficient beta and alpha, how to interpret these coefficients. Uh, and we mention uh, the 10 classical linear regression model assumptions. And we talk about the R square, which is the measure of goodness of fit of our model uh, that we need to look at. Uh, and uh, we uh, start with some simple, uh, simple um, uh, commands in data. In the last uh, lecture, I'm going to cover a full lecture uh, all related to the state software, just to give you an indication how you can apply all these models. Uh, that I'm going to cover in, the, in this uh, paper uh, in practice. Uh, thank you. If you have some question now, uh, you can ask. If not, uh, you can uh, email all your questions to my email, which uh, is given on the first slide of this course. Thank you very much, Dr. Anita, for the lecture. Uh, the audience, please feel free to ask if you have uh, any questions. It seems uh, that we don't have any questions for Dr. Anita. Uh, the audience, thank you very much for your time. We hope that you will uh, join us for the next lecture. Thank you.